That's why in Mecca there was no hypocrisy. There was only Iman and Kufr. It was only this fifth element or this fifth column that began to exist inside Medina because the hypocrites saw that if the Prophet ﷺ, he continues in his message that we're going to be taken out. That's why many ulama said that these ayat, these 11 ayat sent inside Medina at the time of Bani al-Mustaliq, the, the Ghazwa, this, this warfare that took place against this tribe and the well of al-Murisay, Murisay, this well that you find whereby the companions, they got together to drink some water. And you find that and a dispute began to take place with Al-Ansar wal Muhajirun. And each one called his own followers. Just like today, when people dispute amongst one another, my group, my family members, my tribe, my people, whatever it may be. What did the Prophet ﷺ, he warned his people, what did he say to them? Leave these racist slogans, these chants of Jahiliyyah, of pre-Islamic practice. Inna hadhi ummatukum ummatan wahida wa ana rabbukum fa'budun. This Islam is one way of life. One way of life, one belief for every single individual. There is no fadl, there is no virtue that when we travel through the earth. Fadl al-Arabi ala ajami wa ajami ala Arabi. Look at the world. Hypocrisy. When people say no, it's not hypocrisy, it's clear hypocrisy. That they treat, mistreat people, mistreat Muslims. And look how they treat disbelieving individuals. Not that we ever want that to happen. But look how they, look at the, the way it enacts in society, society. That's clear hypocrisy. That people display certain things. Al-istihzab bi ahli sunnah, al-istihzab bil islam is hypocrisy to make a mockery of Islam, to make joke about Islam, to ridicule about Islam, to make Islam look derogatory, to look religious clerics, look like they're backward individuals. They don't know anything about the modern world. This is what we exist, this is the real world that we live in. Not from non-Muslims, from our own Muslims. This is the real world because this shows a hypocrisy inside the hearts that we haven't polished or we haven't removed. So when this fight, when it breaks out, each one of them causes the, calls their own members and they begin to squabble amongst one another. Abdullah ibn Ubay as saloon what does he say? Sammin kalbak yakuluk. He makes his proverb, he says that you, you fatten your dog and it eats you. What does he mean by that? He said, you allow these people, you allow the Muhajirun to come into Medina. Now they eat with you, they drink with you, they live with you, they take your food, your cultivation, your land, your property. So it's your own fault. These are the comments that he made. And you find that there's a young boy who's standing there who heard this comment, kind of Ghulayman. A young boy heard this comment and he went back and he rushed back to the Prophet alayhi salatu salam. A kind of Umar, Qa'imad, Umar was standing there. And he conveyed this, that this is what Abdullah ibn Ubay Salul said. Everybody knew that he was a hypocrite. Don't be surprised, they knew that, but there was nothing there to clearly expose this individual. So they say that Allah, maybe this boy, he may have misheard the information. So when they call Abdullah ibn Ubay Salul, he comes and he comes to the Prophet I'm giving his excuses, weeping, crocodile tears. I never said anything of the sort. Maybe the young boy heard it incorrectly. So the Prophet gives him that excuse. And what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send down these ayat? Sends down this whole surah up to 11, up to the, uh, 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 about the verse speaking about the, they want to expel you from Medina. They want to throw you out of Medina and they want to be powerful and dominant themselves. So Allah exposes what the belief of these individuals are. If you begin from the beginning of the surah, إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ إِذَا آتَوْكَ يَأْتُونَكَ If they come, المنافقون. What are the sifat al What are the characteristics of the hypocrites that we should be worried about inside our lives? أَوَّلًا that we find as-salah. وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كُسَالًا وَلَا يُنْفِقُونَ إِلَّا وَهُمْ كَارِهُونَ وَلَا يَأْتُونَ الصَّلَاةَ نَفْسُ الْكَلِمَاتِ إِذَا جَاءَكَ When they come to salah, they come to salah kusala. In a state of laziness. Laziness. Because salah for munafiqeen is thaqeel. It's heavy. It's burdensome for them. They find it hard to come for salah. That's awal sifa lil munafiqeen. First sifa of the hypocrites. Al-amali. If a person finds it hard to come to salah, they need to delve deep down inside their heart. Another place in the Quran, Allah sends out Surah Nisa. وَإِذَا قَامُوا لِلسَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا يُرَاؤُونَ النَّاسَ وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا they stand for prayer, they stand in a state of laziness. Allah says, Inna al-munafiqeena yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'uhum. The hypocrites, they try to deceive Allah. And Allah is able to pick up their deception. And then the symbol of their deception. When they stand for salah, they stand in a state of laziness. And when they do stand in prayer, يُرَاؤُونَ النَّاسِ that people may tick the boxes. 
Here I am on television reading Salah. Here I am outside this location in Masjid reading Salah. Here I am because I don't want to be exposed by the community. I'm here for Salah. And then Allah says the inner meaning. وَلَا يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا And when they do stand there, inside their heart. لِأَنَّ الصَّلَاةِ الْخُشُوفِ فِي الْقُلُوبِ الصَّلَاةِ is inside the heart. حَذُّ الصَّلَاةِ لِرَجُلِي Your share of your salah is what is inside your heart. Person gains a full reward. All of us, we stand equally inside salah. What excels one individual to another individual? It's inside the heart. The devotion, the commitment inside the heart of the individual, it excels their reward. So when they stand inside prayer, They only remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a minute amount. Minute amount. Then Allah speaks about these individuals. مُذَبْدَبِينَ They're here. When they come inside the masjid, they're with the Muslims. When they go outside, they're with the people, with their friends outside with them. Neither here, neither there. Or over here or over there. That's what happens. Their iman begins to waver all over the place. Because why? They don't understand the essence of as-salah. They don't understand as-salah. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَلَذِكْرُ اللَّيْ أَكْبَرْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَصْدَعُونَ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ The impact of salah inside a person's life. What's the impact of salah? This is as-sila. بَيْنَكَ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ This is your relationship between your bond between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're speaking to Allah on a daily basis. Shaykh Sa'bin Taymiyyah kana yaqool. If you want to speak to Allah, you want to speak to Allah, then stand inside salah. You want Allah to speak to you, taqra' al-Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. Read the Qur'an. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak to you, that's when you read the Qur'an, you should always be pondering inside your life, thinking, these ayat are applying to me. Please like, share, and subscribe to the Digital Member YouTube channel, and hit the notification bell. Please also like, share, and subscribe to our Facebook and Twitter. Links in the description of this video.